And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me, <clears throat> I have a returning good brother to the temple. Coming to us straight from the World Anvil Publishing, previously responsible for Broken Tales, now responsible for its expansion, Lost Stories, the one and only Tommaso De Benetti. Yeah, you absolutely today? right. You are you are you did a great job with my name. It's not easy, <laughs> but you remember how to pronounce it. So, congrats. <laughs> after dealing after dealing with Max Cacristi, um, I've had a bit of practice. Okay. But, right, uh, great to be here again. It's been uh, two years. We were yep. uh, reminiscing. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we have a new campaign. Yeah, one that is do one that is doing pretty well. Because at the time of this recording, you were asking for five thousand euro, and it's currently at forty-two point two thousand. Yeah, um, yeah, we we passed the goal um, very quickly. Seven minutes, in fact. Mm -hmm. It is faster than uh, the previous campaign, uh, where we smashed the goal in 10 minutes. Of course, certain things are by design. I've been running uh, enough campaigns at this point. Uh, after Broken Tales, we did another one, not on Kickstarter. We did it on Backer Kid crowdfunding uh, for a game called Dead Air Seasons, um, yep. in the, with the vibes similar to The Last of Us. That's coming out this year. Uh, and now we're back on Kickstarter with uh, the sequel for uh, Broken Tales, which is um, um, an expansion. It's not a standalone product, uh, but in the campaign, we also uh, sell again the core book and the first expansion, the broken ones for the people who missed it the first time. Mm -hmm. And uh, because we have been having a bit of troubles to get international distribution going, uh, I think this would be a great opportunity for them to to get uh, the books because uh, in, th in this way they will get it for sure. And getting them into stores has, has proven very difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly, not, not because there's no interest, actually, we got some offers, but uh, um, the problem is that we do very small print runs. And uh, when you do that, just the cost of moving the stuff across the ocean basically obliterates any margin we have and that like we would do a lot of work for free pretty much so mm -hmm. so we decided not to do it and uh, we'd rather run another campaign and and um send the books to people directly mm -hmm. and this is a great way to to get them yeah now when it comes to lost stories were the idea the ideas and concepts in in this were these ones that had that had been discussed during the development of the of the original um, Broken Tales, or were these ones that um, came to be after Broken Tales was finished? So, uh, Lost Stories includes, uh, first of all, it includes several things. Uh, it includes uh, uh, new scenarios, uh, playable scenarios. It includes uh, uh, the nemesis or a new kind of foe that uh, the hunters will face uh, can uh, face it during uh, the campaign that is in the core book because we have a way to create a campaign uh, tying together all the scenarios or also after that campaign uh, they can be introduced later uh, to play the new scenarios and uh, we have um, a new location uh, which is Rome the city of the order in the first two books is just mentioned uh, as the place where the hunters go to get their uh, jobs, so to say, but it's never really detailed, and, and we detail it in this uh, book. And then there are uh, new dark presences, which are, um, let's say, powerful NPCs uh, taken from fairy tales that uh, are not playable, uh, but but they are still um, some some elements that 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 um, can be dropped. Uh, here and there in the campaign between scenarios or even in the scenarios to make the life easier if they are allies or harder if they're not to to the players then we have new treasures of the orders which are our version of artifacts in this case they uh, they're not really throwaway artifacts because they basically give the 
characters uh, an extra gift, mm -hmm. which are our um, special skills, uh, let's say. And uh, because in general, uh, every character is limited just to three, having one of these uh, treasures uh, changes things quite significantly. Um, and then we have a bunch of stretch goals. For this campaign, uh, we started the campaign with uh, five uh, base hunters mm -hmm. and we already unlocked uh, four more. Let me check. Uh, five more, mm -hmm. uh, two of which are exclusive on top of uh, other three which were exclusive from the beginning. So right now, if somebody enters, uh, we'll get eight standard hunters plus five exclusives and, and we're fairly close to unlocking a couple of other exclusive things just for backers uh, of the campaign yeah. um, because yeah uh, of course it will be possible to buy the game at retail even from our online store later but it will not include this special stuff that we have just for the campaign mm -hmm. now uh, with that with that in mind the I'd like to um, I'd like to kind of dip into dip into the theming and the and the play style of the new hunters that you're that you're going to be add that you're going to be adding um, as listed on the Kickstarter. Start starting with um, Cersei the Alchemist. So oh, yeah, actually, uh, I don't think I answered your previous question because when I start <laughs> to speak, then I, then I go in my own direction. Uh, w what what you were asking is like, how did you come up with this kind of content? Uh, so it was um, a mix of what we heard, uh, the community, um, what they were discussing, what they would want to do, uh, because there are the rules to make this stuff yourself, but of course having them as official entries is quite different, even because it's easier for people to say, hey, I would like to do this character, but then never really do it. Uh, we do have a subreddit, a Broken Tales subreddit, where people can post their own creations, and it's it's quite rich. Um, but of course, some of uh, some ideas deserve maybe an unofficial treatment. So some of that come from there, and some were ideas that were discussed. Um, we had many ideas for what this book could be. Some of them were quite extreme, uh, in the sense that at some point we were thinking like, "Hey, let's focus just on myth, not just uh, on fairy tales." Um, so do some sort of broken myth uh, game. But it wouldn't, like, when we started thinking about it and how it could work and how does it fit to the existing lore, etc., it really felt that it didn't uh, fit the world really well. And it would bring, like, there would be some kind of mechanics that, that, that wouldn't make much sense in the world of Broken Tales. So what we decided to do instead was to take some iconic figure from myth like for example in the initial rose of hunters we have uh, um uh, what we call church i don't know in english you pronounce it sir sir say i'm yeah. not sure <laughs> uh, yeah uh and then uh, there would be loki uh, from uh, um uh, from the the um, uh, nordic mythology mm -hmm. uh, we decided to take some of the characters that would fit uh, Broken Tales uh, without requiring requiring it to become a very different uh, game. Because when you start to deal only with myths, then there starts to be mm, some um, framing that you need to do with uh, various uh, Pantheons uh, and the fate and a bunch of considerations that we felt would make for a different game and we didn't want to make a different game yet. Uh, I'm not saying that it might never happen, I'm just saying that that uh, uh, it wasn't the right idea for this expansion. And then we had other ideas uh, like exploring various uh, cities mm -hmm. uh, where to set um, the scenarios and that was an idea I really liked, but it made the product uh, a bit too big for, for what we were willing to do this time. Uh, of course, the bigger you make the product, the, the bigger <laughs> the crash if things don't go as planned. So we decided to uh, bring it back to what city is actually really important in the setting, which is Rome. Yeah. And um, 
we decided to um, explore Rome uh, in the update that I will send out this evening there will be also the first sketches of how the city looks or some ideas we have on, on how it should look because of course uh, it's easy to paint the, the Coliseum or the Fountain of Trevi or the monuments that people all around the world know but that's probably not the only places where we want people to play because these are like this is not TripAdvisor, right? We we want to give you uh, some kind of views of the city where actually adventure can happen. Yeah. So so that's 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 uh, how we are looking at a city like that. Mm -hmm. And in Rome, we are planning to have events that will happen between scenarios. Yep. We are planning to have a special NPCs that will just show up in there. And uh, uh, for what I understand from my author, I haven't read the Rome chapter yet because I want to point out that uh, we are working on the game it's not ready like we need the campaign fun funds to make it so it's not one of these situations where everything is ready we just do this kind of pre-marketing to sell it like we are actually working on the game it's gonna be out in a year so we'll take this year to make the best possible game we can best possible expansion um, for what I understand from my author, he wants also to put some possibility to be betrayed in Rome. So there, there are, there's going to be some interesting city mechanic in there uh, that we haven't had before. Yeah, and I, I can, I can certainly get be get behind that. Now, to to double down on what I, on what I mentioned on why what, what I had asked, because um, I want I wanted to go into each to some of the hunters and get and kind of get a feel for what they what each of them is going to bring to the table and to that end i, I wanted to start with um cersei because just from just from some of the previews that you had been putting out there's some interesting things you're doing with several of them yeah so cersei is from she comes from the uh, greek mythology mm -hmm. um was a bit of, a, of an outcast in the original myth um, and it's famous for turning sailors into pigs. So in this game, uh, because she was pretty much a witch in the in the myth, uh, we decided to turn her into an alchemist. Uh, I don't know if I, we, we actually never explained the premise of the game because I don't know if people re know exactly what Broken Tales is about and and um, if, or if they listened to the, the episode uh, two years ago we did for the main campaign. Um, the idea is that the villains from uh, the fairy tales, uh, and in this case uh, some myths, um, have become uh, good. They become good because uh, a child, the child savior, saved the world of fairy tales, uh, got a wish to express, and he expressed um, the wish for, for these villains to finally find some solace and become good. But in doing so, he didn't realize that he would basically shatter the fairy tales and the myths as we know them and the characters that before were good uh, now they have different roles they have they, they haven't become necessarily evil but but they are not what we remember from the stories so, so all the fairy tales that we explore and all the stories we explore they might sound familiar but they will definitely have some twists that that uh, you do not expect Okay, so uh, in the case of, of uh, Cersei, we decided to turn her into an alchemist. She can use various concoction, and she will also have this uh, um, companion, uh, which is a pig, uh, uh, that she can um, uh, influence with her magic, and he can do some pretty interesting uh, stuff. So. Uh, we are turning these villains into, generally speaking, positive characters. Some are more positive than others. All of them uh, work for uh, what we call now the Order, which is uh, this kind of uh, secret society uh, ruled by the papacy in Rome. That's why I was talking about Rome. Um, and they are sent around the world to fix the mess that was created when all these uh, tales were, were shattered. Um, in this uh, initial Rose of Hunters, I wanted to add one 100% positive character because we hadn't had one. 
so far. All of them have still some kind of dark aspect in them. And even one of their gifts out of three, um, it's a callback to their original story. Uh, it's called the Dark Ego. And uh, um, even though they are, these characters have been rebuilt, they've been interpreted in a different way, that specific gift brings them back to what they are in the original story. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have this character called the Prince Trollo, the Innocent. Uh, first of all, I love I love the name, uh, mm -hmm. so I, I definitely wanted to have a character called Trollo. Uh, but we decided to make him a child, and he's um, a changeling, pretty much. Mm -hmm. He's being exchanged uh, in the crib. Uh, by the troll, uh, like he's a, he's a troll, and he's been exchanged uh, for a real baby uh, mm -hmm. when when he was young, and he's been uh, raised uh, as a prince, even though he looks different, he looks ugly, uh, but he's a very positive character, and uh, most of his power, um, they they are about. Um, inspiring the other companions to do good things in the world. He also has a dark ego and he does become super strong and his uh, skin becomes like the skin of a troll, like stone. So he also has a little dark aspect, but in general, I think it's the most positive character we had so far. And if you see the artwork, I think you will, uh, you will understand why I'm saying that because he looks very cute. And... <laughs> yeah. Now, when it comes to the when it comes to the concept of the ne of the nemesis, um, yeah, like with the with each of with each of the with each of them, you mentioned it mentions on the page about locations and um sto and story hooks, and I yeah. I get the feeling that one of the things you want one of the things you wanted to do is that even if even if similar nemeses are used across different tables. They don't have to be used exactly the same way. No. First of all, uh, we provide um, players with five nemesis. They are based on uh, uh, iconic uh, fable archetypes. Mm -hmm. One is based on the hunter, the huntsman, uh, if, you, if you prefer. Uh, we call hunters uh, all the characters. In this case, huntsman is maybe more precise. Uh, one is based on the uh, uh, archetype of the princess. Uh, one is based on the archetype of the criminal. Mm -hmm. um, then we have one based on the archetype of uh, the king. And the last one, let me think about it. It's about the archetype of the um, fairy slash witch. Okay. Uh, we are unveiling them uh, bit by bit uh, in more detail because they are getting unlocked and they are the part of the exclusive for the campaign. Uh, they are unlocked as hunters. So once they will be defeated in the campaign, they become playable hunters. Mm -hmm. uh, and in that, when they become that, then they, they have a specific personality. Yes. Uh, the idea with the Nemesis is that they become the worst nightmare of one of the hunters of your pack mm -hmm. and they will hunt this this hunter down all the time and they're very strong foes a bit like having an alien uh, uh xenomorph <laughs> following you all the time mm -hmm. um the idea there is that they will force the group to work together to protect the target hunter yeah. Uh, so that's the idea, but we also provide you with rules to create your own nemesis. Mm. So you don't, you're not limited to those that we already made for you. You can make your own if you if you think you have a good idea for for a, for a nemesis that we didn't think about. Yeah. Now, I did see that there's a few. Speaking of hunters, that there's a few hunters that you have planned that are going to be exclusive to the Kickstarter. Yeah. And I would like to dip in, dip into those and and what you have planned for them. Yeah. So um, those are a bit of a, like when we were thinking, okay, what is this new expansion about? In the beginning, we were thinking, what if we actually do a whole book about uh, 19th century novels? Uh, and it, it would go well with some of the ideas we had for the cities, etc. But then when we realize, okay, the project is becoming too big, like we 
it, it's becoming too risky. We don't know. Like, to be honest, we didn't know if people wanted more Broken Tales after the first two books. But it turns out that uh, most of the people who got the book, they're very happy with what we provided. Uh, on top of the campaign, I, I created a GIF with some of the comments we got from uh, people getting their books. Um, and even if they didn't have time to play, uh, I think that the quality of the books is undeniable. Um, just skimming through them, they're basically hard books. <laughs> so um, it turns out that people wanted more Broken Tales. And um, and we thought, like, I, we really liked the idea of having some hunters that weren't strictly from fairy tales. And there was a lot of potential in this uh, 19th century novels. Mm -hmm. To give examples to the people that are listening, um, we started the campaign with three. Uh, the Pale Medic, which is inspired by, by Dracula from Bram Stoker. Then we have Dr. V. Frankenstein, which is inspired by Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, of course. And then there's Moriarty, the Gentleman Thief, uh, which is inspired by the, the work of uh, uh, Sir Conan Doyle with, with Sherlock Holmes. And then we, um, I think now in the list of the stretch goals, the next one to be unlocked is going to be uh, the respectable... Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Mars from uh, the World of Words mm -hmm. uh, by H.G. Wells, mm -hmm. uh, which at I, I, the beginning I didn't know. Uh, it's uh, it's a 19th century novel. Um, I, I was uh, in the beginning. I was like, oh, isn't that a radio drama? No, but it, it is a novel. So um, they are gonna provide quite different gameplay because they they're gonna have access to technology that the other hunters don't have. Especially the when we unlock, if we unlock, I, I think we will unlock the um, uh, the respectable Mister and, and Mrs. Mars. They are alien and they have access to alien technology, so it's going to be a bit of a weird uh, mix with the other hunters that come from fairy tales. Uh, but we think well, that's that's also one of the reasons why they are exclusive to the campaign. They are extra characters. Yeah, they are characters if you want to play something a bit different. Yeah. Uh, they are not strictly canon, mm -hmm. uh, but but they have a lot of potential to 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 be fun to play. Uh, for example, one thing I love about this this uh, next um, 19th century hunter we're going to unlock, the the uh, Mister and Missus Mars, is that they can accidentally trigger an alien invasion, <laughs> which is going to be interesting um, uh, to see in play while people are trying to solve the the current uh issue yeah uh i will admit of, of the three of the one the one that i f i find potentially the most interesting is moriarty the gentleman thief yes uh if if i think the reason why is because is because there is that unofficial crossover between um sherlock holmes and arsene lupin that w which was never outright endorsed by um, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. It was, it was something that Lupin's writer did, right? Writer did just because he th just because he felt like it. Yeah. So sorry. What, what's uh, what, what, what's your question? Um, I think the the question the question is since I since I we've talked since we've talked about um, the kind of play styles that that. Would be present. I am curious how, how, how um, how you how you have Moriarty going from the criminal mastermind to the gentleman thief. So the, his background uh, story. Let me bring up his uh, um, character sheet so I can be more precise. Uh, so first of all, I can tell you how he plays. Uh, he plays like uh, Moriarty always has a plan. Mm -hmm. And he always planned in advance. So during the game, he can basically use his gifts to claim that he already kind of prepared the scene for something that was happening. He can summon some uh, gang that, that would help him getting stuff done. Uh, and uh, um, he, he always has this grand plan, has a token mechanic that we use in only certain uh, hunters. And expanding these tokens, he can, he can make things um happen and then um well he used of course like the the his story is similar to the original one he was um 
criminal mastermind uh, until he met uh, the most famous investigator in uh, the world. And uh, of course, at that point, he understood, okay, this is going to be um, something that is worth my time, pretty much. Um, so at some point, they actually bought uh, fake their uh their death uh because they realize that they are somewhat in love with each other <laughs> and they cannot exist without the other um but at some point sherlock holmes uh decides that he doesn't like this private life uh, anymore and he goes back to what he was doing uh before so at that point the order takes Moriarty under his wing and says hey your genius mind can be put to good use and uh, why don't you work for us so that's pretty much uh, the idea it's a bit of the wounded lover in a way <laughs> well this, well hell hath no fury as it is yeah so this is a bit of a weird hunter but um I think we wanted to give it a different spin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, with with that in, with that in mind, um, when it come, I do remember I do remember um, the I do remember the original have, having its own having its own little um su having its own little soundtrack. Um, yeah. And I am I am curious if that if um exp if expanding upon that has been something that's been cons been considered for the future. So uh, the original soundtrack was composed by my wife. Um, uh, she's called Jane Toika, uh, Finnish lady, uh, yep. great Finnish lady, I must say. <laughs> this this I have to put on record. Um, <laughs> Between the first and the second campaign, uh, we got a baby, so that made uh, composing a lot harder. And um, she did some new composing, and you can actually hear it in the trailer mm -hmm. of the the new campaign. But that's pretty much everything she she managed to do in this time. Yeah. Um, so it's not that she wouldn't want to do more; it's just that with a small baby, it's so complicated to do it because you end up. You can do it only late in the evening. Yeah. And um, so at the moment, uh, from that side, things are a bit still, even though there's always been ideas and there are many stems for, like initially I was um, giving her several scenarios from the original game, say, hey, just read them through, maybe we'll give you inspiration. And uh, I remember she did start um, composing some music for for uh, the Anger Highland, the, the one, um, based in Iceland and uh, it was actually pretty good stuff but it's not like the the, the soundtrack is not complete it's, they're not complete songs so there are just bits and pieces that sound really good but they're not complete uh, tracks however um, I'm not saying that there's not gonna be more Broken Tales music in the future because there might be um, I have an announcement that I think goes out this week mm -hmm. uh, that of a collaboration let's say i haven't yet announced this um and that might also involve some music in the future it's not gonna be quick but there might be some original music for broken tales yes yeah now something that something that i should note when it comes to the new the new hunters is that some of is that several of them that have been unlocked in fact two of them have been designated as nemesis hunter and s since one of the things that Broken Tales offers is a means to um, add to the potential list of hunters. I am curious what I'm curious um, what the dividing line between hunters and nemesis hunters would be. Yeah, so the dividing line is that these are the nemesis that we will have in Lost Stories as uh, foes, mm -hmm. right? But if during one scenario, when they are hunting you, you manage to defeat them and somewhat bring them uh, to see light and bring them to the order, mm -hmm. they become playable character. 
and at that point uh, those become nemesis hunter in fact the two we unlocked are nemo the beast slayer which would be the huntsman and then the princess viola of alto monte which would be the princess mm -hmm. so they are the same foes that you find in the in lost stories but because when uh, from an NPC you turn them into a playable character they need to have different rules and also at this point of the game they would become good so to say so they are they have different character sheets to, to, to be clear they have different powers they have different uh, things so this is the same as like uh, when we in the original campaign we had the, the broken ones and uh, many of the hunters from that expansion the broken ones they were the bad guys of the scenarios of the core book but if you were able to defeat them they will become playable uh, playable hunters and that's pretty much the same idea here so they are broken ones nemesis i just mm -hmm. i don't know if, if i didn't know how exactly to express that but they they are the nemesis that have become playable so now they are hunters yeah so one of the things I noticed was that the first stretch goal that you unlocked was um, support on roll, which I have been seeing roll get 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 a growing amount of attention in the la in the last few months. Uh, what made you want What made you want to go with roll as far as virtual tabletop support? Uh, well, uh, we do have the original game in there. Uh, Broken Tales is supported on roll. Uh, when we joined roll. Um, we liked the fact that they were focusing on indie games and not just on the big guys. Uh, of course, uh, over the months, they have uh, brought in some bigger titles. So now they have quite a lot of things from Modifius, for example. Mm -hmm. I know they have Dune, they have, uh, there's the new Avatar uh, from Magpie. Um, they have Star Trek, some, some other titles. Uh, but I did like that they were like their, mm, the deal was very good for us. They would take care of almost of everything. Mm -hmm. And that's very important because like, we want to focus on the game, not on the software, or not on a platform. We want to do the game. Um, and uh, well, to be honest, I just liked how Roll worked. Uh, but we, I do understand that uh, some people like other uh, virtual tabletop uh, platforms. Uh, there's a good selection out there now. And um, I think uh, you should uh, stay tuned for news. Mm -hmm. And it, the speaking of stretch goals, uh, when I when I look at some of the scenarios that ha that have been unlocked, there are there are a few that I'm I'm curious as to the as to the angle that that you would be taking. One of them is um, Journey of a Thousand and One Nights. Since yes, there's a obviously the the stories that Sherazad tells there's a lot of there's a lot of them and it it well it, well I'm not going to say it'd be impossible to cover all of them in scenarios it would it would have to be its own it would have to be its own book so I am curious um the of the um of the kind of the kind of angle and the kind of setup that um Journey of a Thousand and One Nights is using in Broken Tales Right, so of course it doesn't cover the whole uh, 1001 Nights. Uh, I am afraid I'm not the best person to answer this question because this being a stretch goal scenario, mm -hmm. uh, it's not uh, one that it's ready uh, at the moment. I just have a synopsis. My author, Alberto, has a much better idea of uh, where he's going with this uh, with the scenarios. Um, I know that he he wants uh, the hunters to be like in the original campaign we had uh, this scenario with Sherazad that traps the hunters inside the, the story of Toothstar, a Swedish um, Swedish uh, story mm -hmm. that was written by our guest Petar Nallo, uh, which is the um, I would say the creative director behind the the last edition of Cult. So uh, she was used there in an official scenario. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, we got good feedback from that, uh, and we thought it would be cool to bring her back. Yep. 
Uh, my understanding of what Alberto wants to do with this scenario is that um, there's going to be scenes from several of the stories from uh, A Thousand and uh, One Nights, mm -hmm. but I'm unable to give you more details because uh, it's an ad advanced stretch goal um, and I'm not the author. <laughs> And and I'm not one, like I have to say that uh, he's always trying to push my, um, content on me to read and review, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've been t forbidding him uh, to send me stuff during the campaign because it's so much work already that I don't have time to review all the material he's writing, and he's really like prolific writer. So uh, this morning we were just discussing about the future game. And he was suggesting new content, and we are already clocking at 500 pages something. And I was like, "Man, just stop! <laughs> like, what do you want from me? Like, I can't, I can't review all this material, you know." It's so, a, it sounds um, like he has you spinning plates. Yeah, yeah. So I actually for like I'm. He wrote a lot more than I actually saw so far. Mm -hmm. I just told him, "Don't send me anything right now because I need to focus on this." And then, as soon as this is over, I have time to. To review everything so i know the general plan for certain things mm. i don't know the, de the details uh, one thing i know about the other scenario we unlocked uh, the the king's awakening mm -hmm. it's based on the arturian myth um first of all the arturian myth is something we got a lot of requests for uh and there's a lot of stories to tell there um this scenario initially was conceived as a multi-table scenario i don't know if you're familiar with the practice of having this uh, scenario that can be played i, have, by multiple I am yeah. i've yeah, okay. um i've done i've done it in the i've done it in the past i yeah. um it, it my i get i give my sympathies to anyone who has a, anyone who has attempted it because it sure as hell is not easy to manage all of that at once no, it's not easy, but uh, we have a lot of players that are actually familiar with it because maybe they run tables at cons. Like, it is a popular concept, and uh, um, I know some people are quite successful at it. So this this was um, initially conceived as a multi-table scenario. Um, Alberto was telling me that in the end, like, they didn't manage to use it because the, the con didn't happen where it was supposed to be played. So it's uh, it's not fully written and uh, he is thinking that if he can maintain the um, multi-table structure and it works and it makes sense, um, he will keep it. Uh, but I want to make sure that it's also playable as a normal scenario because uh, it involves uh, several groups of hunters on, on an island and they have to somewhat compete with each other to uh, solve a problem on this island. Uh, but I want to make sure that if you don't have four tables, of, because it's already hard enough to put together just a, a full table. So uh, I would want this to be a scenario that you can play just as a normal thing. And then you have some competing NPC uh, hunters that, that are trying to ruin your day. But if you want, you can also play it with uh, multiple tables and then maybe everybody, uh, I don't know exactly how he's planning to structure it, but the idea would be that whatever the other ta tables are doing will inf influence uh, something in yours, right? That That's uh, the basic idea. So uh, if possible, we'll try to keep this structure. I think it would be an interesting experiment, but, but I want to make sure that it's playable as, also as a normal scenario. Oh, yeah. So... With that, with that in mind, um, given, I know, that, I know that you mentioned that you end up getting, more, you end up getting more stuff than you could, you could possibly put into, the, into the book. But um, how big, how big of a book, how big of a book are you, are you guys planning for? So, well, of course, it depends how far we get with the stretch goals. Uh, our goal at the moment is to have a book that is uh, more or less the same size as the core book. So bigger than the first expansion. Uh, that said, uh, I never like to judge the books by the number of pages <laughs> because I don't think that the number of pages equals good content. Uh, I do understand that people make the math like, oh, how much does each page of this cost? But I think it's a bad way to look at uh, narrative or games or like, it's never working out like, mm, most of the my favorite gaming experience when I think about video games, they are short games. They're like 
five hour games. They are not like a 700 hours games. And then, well, there are the exceptions. Now I'm playing the new Zelda, so I'm sure I'm going to spend 100 hours there. But in general, what I care about when I do role play games is that everything that is in the book is something you can use. And everything that is in the book is well written, it's easy to understand, and people enjoy it. And I don't want to put stuff just to for page count because I think that's that's the wrong way to to look at at, uh, at RPG content. It needs to be something that people can use at the table that is enjoyable and it's just good. Yeah, and I I will certainly I will certainly be keep keeping an eye out on things. I know I, especially since I know that this that um. That when it comes when it comes to getting these getting these kind of things out there, it's always a long and arduous process. You mean like the shipping thing, or uh, or or just getting it done? Yes. <laughs> yes to both. Uh, yeah, it's definitely a hard process, especially. Uh, well, we we are doing them in two languages. Uh, we we write in Italian and then translate into English. So we have a lot of steps that maybe some American creators don't have, mm -hmm. uh, because you can just write in your own language and then you do a round of editing and, and it's done. Uh, we we write it in one language, then we edit it in one language, then we do the translation, then we have a native speaker that does the editing. Um, it's a lot of extra steps. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, costly and it takes a lot of time. And I also personally care that it's done really well, even though maybe it takes me a month, an extra month, because I don't think there is a remedy for a game that comes out unfinished or uh, with a lot of typos or, you know, you can't fix that. Mm. You can fix the digital thing, but the book is printed. So it is long because it takes a long time to, to do this stuff. And then uh, I always remind people I cannot do this full time yet. Uh, we are not big enough to do that, that yet. So everybody is doing this on top of, of their real work. And that means that we work the evenings, we work early in the morning, uh, uh, we work uh, all the weekends. I honestly do not remember a weekend in the last two years where I never for once checked some work for the word anvil. And uh, of course, probably that's not super healthy, but but if you have to do it and the stuff needs to come out in a reasonable time, that's the only way to do it. Unless your stuff does so well that, okay, now you don't need to go to the office anymore. Now you can focus on the stuff, but we're not there yet. Um, and uh, well, it might take us uh, a bit longer to get there. But of course, I hope that at some point we, we find a project that basically allows us to do this full time it would be great i've been working many years to in that direction uh it's it's difficult mm -hmm. it's uh, it's a long process because especially we we have uh, our own system uh, maybe we don't do the most popular uh, teams um but i also don't want to do something that i'm not passionate about yeah you know? and i will i will certainly be looking forward to seeing how it how it develops but with all that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come all the way to my temple and enjoy the madness that happens here. Thank you very much for having me. I, I'm, I'm sure the backers of the campaign and your listeners will enjoy the, the conversation. And, uh, well, if they're curious, maybe they can check out the campaign. Mm -hmm. And, of course, anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often say around here, Drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. Of course. Thank you very much for having me. Mm -hmm. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, Stay fucking frosty, everybody!